In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a VS Code snippet, hook it up with a keyboard shortcut, and do a bunch of advanced snippet features, which are gonna save you so much time. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner, and creating your own custom snippets is one way to really accelerate your workflow. So in order to create a snippet, you can just click File, scroll down to Preferences, and here you're going to see User Snippets. Click on this, and you're gonna get a pop-up with a bunch of different options. You can create a global snippet file, a snippet file specifically for the project you're in, or you can create a snippet file for like any language you want. I think a global snippet file is the best way to go. So I'm just gonna create a new global snippet file. You can call it whatever you want. We'll just call it snippets. And anyway, we enter. You can see we get essentially a bunch of information at the top here that kind of describes to you how to work with snippets. And if you want some more information on how to work with snippets, there's actually documentation for user to find snippets that includes everything you would ever need to know. We're gonna come back to that in just a little bit. And then down here, we have an example of what a snippet looks like. So if we uncomment this, we essentially have a snippet called print to console. The scope means it's going to run in either JavaScript or TypeScript. The prefix is log, so that's like what you actually type on your keyboard. The body is the actual text that's going to be printed out here, and the description is just a description of what's happening. So let's modify this just a little bit. We're just gonna change the name here to console.log. The description is gonna be completely fine, and we're gonna change how this actual output is in a little bit, and we're gonna change the prefix here to CL. So inside of here, what I want to do is I essentially want to just print out by default the text here. So I just wanted to say console log here. So an easy way to do that is just come in here and we're going to say here. Perfect. Click save. Now we come over to our script. If I type in CL and I hit enter, you can see it creates that snippet. It prints out all of our code and it just puts my cursor at the very end of the line and it's printing out here. This is the most basic form of a snippet where it always generates the exact same code but oftentimes you're going to want to do something different. You want to like add your own variables in. So in order to do that, we need to use these dollar sign one, two, and so on. That allows you to create what's called a tab stop. So now instead of having the text here, I can put dollar sign one like it was before. Now when I type in CL hit enter, you can see that now my cursor is inside of that section. And when I click tab, it's going to bring me to the end of the line. So now I can actually you know, input my own code inside of there but you can go even a step further by using default variables. So what I wanna do is I wanna wrap this inside of brackets. And inside of brackets here, I either want it to be one, or if I put a colon, I can put a default value, which in my case is going to be here. And I'm actually gonna use backticks here just so I can store you know, variables and such in here. So now if I type in CL and I hit enter, you can see by default it's here, but it's highlighted. So if I type something else, you can see it replaces it with whatever else I type. So it's going to be defaulted to this value of here, Otherwise, it's going to fall back to this one value, which is just whatever I type in. This is my first tab stop. Now, if I wanted to have multiple tab stops, I could do that. For example, this log, what if I wanted to do like console.dir or console.time or something like that? Well, I can actually turn this into another tab stop. I'm going to make this my second tab stop. And, you know, I could default it to log. So I can come in here with the default for log. And now when I come over and I type in CL, hit enter, you can see I have this first section. I hit tab, it brings me to log, and I could change it to like time, for example, or I could change it to dir if I wanted to. But you'll know with console log, there's only like so many options you can choose, you know? So instead of having to, you know, manually remember what each of those is, I want to make this a list. So to create a list inside of this snippet, instead of this colon here, you're going to put a essentially that pipe symbol. And then what you want to do is you just want to list out everything with commas separated. So we're going to have like log, table, count, dir, error and info. It's just a bunch of different, you know, types of console that we have. So now when I come back in here, click CL hit enter. And of course I have an error, it looks like. What I need to do is I need to make sure I put a closing vertical bracket over here. So I have a starting one and a closing one. That kind of defines your like section of your choosable options. And log is my first option. So it's gonna be the one that it defaults to. So now if I hit CL enter, you can see I have here and I hit tab. Now you can see I have a list that's like, hey, choose one of these values. So I could choose like error and there we go. Hit tab again, and it brings me to the end of the line. So this is a really kind of handy function to create for doing console logging. But I can even take it a step further if I wanted to, because let's say I wanted to log out whatever I have highlighted. Let's say I highlighted this and I wanted to log that based on a keyboard shortcut. Well, there's a really easy way to use variables. If I bring over this code again, you can see that there's all these variables that are built in. For example, I could get the currently selected text and I could say, you know what, put that inside of my console log and that's just called TM selected text. So in order to see how this would work, what we wanna do here is we wanna use that TM selected text. And then what I wanna do is I wanna fall back to the value of one. So I'm gonna wrap that inside of those brackets again. And then that one value, I wanna fall back to here. 
So essentially what this is saying right now is it's saying, hey, first get the selected text. And actually I want this to be outside of these uh, quotes. There we go. So I'm saying, hey, by default, give me whatever the selected text is. If I don't have any currently selected text, then you know, fall back to the value of here and override it with the first tab stop. So now if I save this and I come over to my script, obviously I can't say like CL enter. Well, I could say CL enter and you can see it's putting that slow function in there, but it's kind of annoying where I have to highlight it, type CL, hit enter. And it's kind of annoying having to do that in my opinion. So instead, what you can do is you can create a keyboard shortcut that's going to allow you to essentially just highlight something, like I could highlight this, hit a keyboard shortcut, and it's gonna put that snippet in for me. So in order to do that, we need to go to our preferences again. I wanna open up our keyboard shortcuts. And over on the top right here, there's this button that allows you to actually modify the keyboard shortcut file. And down in the right hand corner, you can see define key binding. So I could say, you know, control alt Q, that's going to be my key binding, hit enter. And you can see that our key right here is control alt Q, our command is whatever command we want. And then we say whenever our editor has text focus. This when clause just kind of defines when you can actually use this keyboard shortcut. So like if you wanted it to only be for the terminal, you could say like when the terminal has focus and so on. This is just for when you're in the text editor. Don't really worry about it. The command that we want to run is called editor.action.insert snippet. And then we can pass down a final thing called args. And these args are just a variable that we're going to be passing. And we care about the name. We're saying, hey, we want to call essentially our console log snippet that has the name of console log. And over here, we gave it the name of console log. This key binding says run the snippet that has the name of console log when we hit control alt Q. So now if I save this, come over here, I highlight this and I hit control alt Q, you can see it automatically added that snippet in and we'd say, you know what, we're gonna table whatever the revolts for slow function are. That's super handy in my opinion. So kind of let's look at another example of creating a snippet. We're gonna create another snippet very similar to this. This one is gonna be for console time. So we're gonna say console.time. And inside of here, our scope is gonna be exactly the same. It's gonna be JavaScript. Our prefix here is gonna be CT instead of CL. And inside of our body, we're gonna have a pretty similar body. I'm just gonna console or copy down this uh, description as well. This one is just going to say log benchmark to console. And then our body is obviously quite a bit different. We are going to be doing a console.time and then inside of this console.time, I essentially want to have a tab stop for one. And we're just gonna put that inside of quotes. And then what I wanna do is on another line, I wanna have that TM selected text variable. Otherwise I'll just default it to whatever I wanna type in. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, run console.time and whatever I type in for my tab stop one is going to be this label. Then if I have selected text, use that otherwise, use my tab stop two to put in the text I want there. And then finally, on the next line, I'm gonna have a console dot time end. And this console time end is going to have the exact same tab stop, which is one. And this is kind of to show you that first you can do multi-line statements like this by just having them inside your array. And secondly, you can actually pass multiple tab stops that are exactly the same and it'll change both of them at the same time. So let me show you what this looks like. If I come down here and I type in CT, hit enter, you can see, it does all the new line stuff for us. If I type in, for example, label here, you can see both tab stops enter at the same time. Then I can enter code in the middle, hit tab, and it brings me down to the very end. This is super handy. And again, if I wanted to highlight something and click CT, hit enter, you can see that now I'm able to put that code right in the middle because that's what I had currently selected. You can see that I have my tab stops all working fine. And this is super handy. The main thing to know about these keyboard shortcuts, I'm not sorry, these snippets, is that when you wanna do things, you need that dollar sign syntax. And if you wanna do something more complicated, you need to wrap it inside of these curly brackets. The colon is going to be for defining default values. And as you can see here, you can nest them as many levels deep as you want. And that's all it takes to create these VS Code snippets. If you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out my VS Code keyboard shortcuts. They're all linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.